All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tommy Sotomayor, TJ Sotomayor. Um, I thank you for the introduction, but um, I'm not really good at the law like that. But what I am is good at talking. I'm a big talker. I'm a radio show host out of Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm known for having a big mouth and a lot of opinions about a lot of things. And this is one of the things that I talk about a whole lot. Now, I'm also used to just talking to a microphone and no one sitting in front of me. So I may say something stupid or I may get nervous and just run away. We'll see what happens. All right. What I'm here to talk about is fathers and the importance of fathers. Now, we have a lot of women out here, and I'm glad to see that a lot of women support the movement of fathers' rights. It's sad to me, though. I came here all the way from Atlanta, and uh, Linda Mormon called into my show. And when she called into my show, she gave such great points, and she said she enjoyed my videos that you can see on YouTube. Um, and we just hit it off. So much so that I was actually going to fly to California because I thought she was doing the one in California. But, um, well, she is doing the one in California, but it was in Sacramento. And she said, well, they're having one in Atlanta. Well, I live in Atlanta. I see that all the time, so I didn't want to see that. Um, so I told her I'd come to D.C. And one of the biggest reasons why I came here was because every day in the United States, a father has his rights taken away from him in these courts. These court systems are there for, and, and you got to think about what men have done for the United States. And I'm not against women. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm pro uh, equal rights, all that stuff for everyone. But you have to understand, the monument behind us, it's a bunch of men built that, a bunch of men designed that. The fighting for the, your, your Civil War, your American Revolution, Revolutionary War, your Vietnam, that's a whole bunch of men that gave their lives, blood, sweat, and tears for this country. Yet they come home and they go into courts to be just this one thing that most men value more than anything in the world, their children. But what does the American court system, the American justice system that they fight for in lands that aren't theirs through jungles and, and they die and, and, and they send their sons to die, what does that court system do for them when they come home and they just want to be parents? There's this thing called joint custody system. And I love joint custody because I always thought that joint custody meant 50-50. But it doesn't. Typically what happens in any divorce, the court system decides that the woman is the better parent. We as Americans have been brainwashed into believing that if a divorce happens, the woman gets the child, the man pays for it, and he gets to see it every other weekend. If you see a child every other weekend, you might as well put a McDonald's sign over your head or Disney Mickey Mouse ears on. Because that's pretty much all you can be. Because you can't discipline your child for a day and a half because you're gonna be the bad guy. So all you can be is the fun dad. And anytime you're not the fun dad, you're the bad guy. And if you broke up with the mom in a bad situation, well, I have to speak again from the black perspective. 70 plus percent of our children are born out of wedlock. So there's not many marriages when the kids are born to have uh, dissolved. So the court system looks at our situation a little bit different. So you have a lot of these women who are using the court system as like an ATM machine or a revenge factor. If you don't stay with me, if you cheated on me, if you do something wrong to me, I'm not only going to keep this child from you, but I'm going to turn that child against you. Growing up, I heard words like, you're looking like your damn daddy. And I grew up thinking that, wow, half of me is horrible. And it's the masculine side. Now you ask me, what boy can grow up to be a man when he hates the half of him that is pretty much the whole of him, his masculinity? Many boys out here that are running around in your streets in D.C., in Atlanta, in New York, in L.A., in these inner cities, the one thing people don't want to tell you is this. These inner cities where they have all the violence and all the crime, what is the one consistent factor? Single mothers. You can look up your stats. The stats show that children that have mothers and fathers in their lives grow up to be more productive citizens and less uh, they, they commit less crimes. Yet no one wants to talk about this. No one wants to bring up the fact that the family court does the opposite of its name. Yes. The family court comes to destroy families. It doesn't come to build families. As a matter of fact, these courts make money off of the dissidence between the mom and the father. Now I say some things that make people a little upset. 
But who knows that 70, who out here knows that 70% of all commercials are geared towards women and getting women to buy something? Who knows this? So, if that's the case, that means that they understand that women spend money. How many women out there spend money? <laughs> women spend money. So the court system knows this. Men make money, women spend it. So what does the court system tell you every time you come in? It says, give the woman as much money as she can get and give the man as less time as he can with a child. How many children do you know that grew up, say they were 25, 30, they grew up to be adults, and they argued with their father about how many checks he didn't send? The children typically argue about how much they didn't see their father. Yet the courts tell you that money is more important. Why? Well, let me ask you this question. When's the last time you've seen a woman go into court and petition the judge that he's not seeing his son or daughter enough? I want to force him to see him some more. Never seen that happen. Why not? Because a father's place here in this United States in this feminist court system that we have has, be, has become a non-entity. Men are not valued. If you watch uh, America's Funniest Videos, they kick a man in, in, in his groin area. What does everyone do? Laugh. We laugh at the pain of a man, and then from the time that they're little, little girl could run across here right now, fall and scrape her, lead, her knee. Everyone would get up and tell her, are you okay, and baby this little girl. But then a little boy does the same thing, and they dust him off, and they tell him, stop crying, be a man, man up. And if you notice, when we grow up, they still tell us to be a man, to man up. I know some men right now who have pretty good jobs, who live in studio apartments, paying child support. And the women that they're paying the child support to have nice homes. Did you know that if a man falls behind, say if I ran out and pulled a Terrell Owens and got a bunch of children by a bunch of women, what would the court system do if I couldn't afford to pay this fixed amount every month to those children. What would they do? They'd send me to prison. There was a woman who I did a report about who had 16 children and was pregnant with the 17th when she got on television and she said, somebody gonna help me pay for these kids. And the next week, the United States government or her city council or whatever in the heck gave this woman a six bedroom house. When a woman can't pay for her kids, what does the government do? Subsidize her. Yet you hear this word thrown around a lot. And what word is that? Deadbeat dad. Well, I got another word for you guys. How about beat dead dad? Because a lot of these guys go to court and they dread going to court because they know the judge is looking at them as an ATM machine and looking at the other party as this soft figure that needs to be taken care of. And the sad part isn't that we have a court system that, that just dishes out injustices every day. The sad part is when I look out here that no one cares. If this was a rally for anything about women, it'd be full. Yep. Yep. Everybody would champion that cause. But the majority of men who are going through this court system and are being just beat down by this court system are afraid to show their faces because they don't want to be called weak. They don't want to be called punks. They don't want to be called whiners. They don't want to be called deadbeats. The word has been one of the biggest weights on men in this country's shoulder. Deadbeat. Did you know that a man can be arrested if he's one day late on child support? One day. You understand that child support says, well, if you gotta pay $1,000 a month, you gotta pay $1,000 a month. If you miss it, you're a deadbeat, you're a bad guy. But imagine if you're a woman and you don't make $1,000 that month, to pay for your child or you can't do what you did for your child last month. Does anybody say, well, you're a deadbeat mom. Have you ever heard the term deadbeat mom? Let me tell you something. Women have 30 plus forms of birth control. What do men have? Yep. Yet women are still coddled in the court system. Why? Women can decide up to six months, and since Obama came into office, sometimes up to seven. They can decide they want to have an abortion. And we champion a woman for deciding that she wants to give a child up for adoption because she's not ready for it. Now, can a dad say, hey, I'm on a scholarship for baseball at UNC and I don't want to be a father right now. So um, I'm going to take my hands off this and I don't have to pay for it. 
A woman can leave her child at a hospital. She can leave her child at a fire station. And it's not considered criminal. We give women kudos for having the bravery to get an abortion. The bravery for giving her child up for adoption. But no one says that to a man who says, I'm not ready to be a father right now. Maybe it would be better off in someone else's hands. So we're told that women want equal rights, but the, the United States court system says we want to give women superior rights. Those men who built these monuments, those men who fought in World War I, who, World War II, who stormed the beaches of Normandy, knowing that they were going to die, they come back to a court system that says, your role of a father is not important. Your money is important. Because see, if a man does not give any money, he's considered a deadbeat. A man can give money and never see his kids, and they'll tell you, oh, he's a pretty good dad. A man can be with his kid every day, but lose his job, and he's a deadbeat. He's lazy. We're in an economy right now that's hard on me. No one cares. Pay. It's all about what you can do. But it's never about what you can bring. And we need to start putting into the minds of Americans that fathers matter. Fathers matter because their children value what a father brings. We're equal in some parts, men and women, but we're different. And there used to be a time in America when we embraced the differences between men and women which is what made us good together. Ever put together a jigsaw puzzle? It comes together and it looks nice. All the pieces are different, but they all serve a purpose. And males and females, men and women, mothers and fathers serve a purpose. They always say, it took two to make that baby. Unless you're in court trying to get custody or trying to get visitation. Hell, let's look at the word visitation. Last time I heard that word, I was behind a glass wall. And yet we use that word to refer to fathers seeing their own children like they're criminals. We assume fathers are criminals up front. Why don't we have people like Tom Cruise out here? Why don't we have people like Terrell Owens out here? People who are being dragged through the court system people who are being murdered behind this thing called child support, where they're having to pay for something they don't have, that they're not allowed to see. Did you guys know a woman can go into court and say, this guy got me pregnant, I want him on child support. They will give her that order. You can start paying child support, but you have to go back to that same court and get your child legitimized, which means they don't automatically give you rights to see that child that they automatically told you you have to pay for. Why is that? Why is the role of fatherhood, the role of fathers being so belittled? Watch your television right now. Go watch your television. Watch your any television show. How are the fathers portrayed? Idiots. Slow. Homer Simpsons. Ted Bundy. I mean, Al Bundy. It's not Ted, but... <laughs> <laughs> but you look at him. Look at the commercial. The guy's an idiot. He just drinks beer and he... Guys are idiots. The woman is always smarter than he. How can we survive in a situation? First off, how can you raise a boy when he knows he's going to grow up to be an idiot? And how can you raise a girl when she knows she's going to grow up to marry one? And this is what we're doing in the United States. We're belittling the role of men to the point of where men have now started to feel like, hey, we're not needed, so all I got to do is send this check. We got to stop that. Because as I said earlier, your inner cities are full of these boys and girls who without a father in their lives, they don't know who they are because a father is half of that child. And if they don't value half of themselves, how do they look at the world? How do they look at other people? This is what you have. So what I ask you all to do is to stand up and make the crowd next time bigger than this and bigger than this and bigger than this. Convince the people around you, especially the women around you, that it matters to both of us, not just us. That we're not just a bunch of guys that's running around trying to duck child support. Not all of us. But you think about it. If we could just get together and realize that these children need both parents, 
they don't have to be married. Divorce has happened. But why can't we put it, why can't the system look at it and say, you know what, there needs to be equal time. And if the situations where they feel like money matters, um, a guy just got, um, but he had to give up $8,000 a month for a child. Now, I don't make that kind of money, so that would never happen to me. But he had to give up $8,000 because the court said that he must provide the same type of house that he would have at his house, at her house. So he has to provide for her to have the houses look the same. Yet they've never done that for fathers. Again, I've seen fathers have to pick up their kids and take their kids back to hotels because that's all he can afford. But they've never said, ma'am, how do you think that child is going to feel when it leaves a house to go to a motel for a day and a half? We got to stop this and we got to realize that it's hurting both of us, not just me. It's hurting women and children. And the cycle is getting horrible. It's getting horrible because it appears that no one cares. When I look out here, I feel that no one cares. And it hurts me because I drove all the way here from Atlanta just to speak to you guys. And it makes me want to cry when I look around and I see that no one takes the role of father seriously. We are that football to the groin. We're the laughter. We're for public ridicule. Because like when we were little boys, when we failed, they told us to suck it up. And people who are doing what I'm doing are complaining. Well, no, we're not complaining. What we're doing is wanting equal rights. What we're doing is wanting our children to grow up like they used to grow up. With both parents whole, instead of with holes in them, missing the people that love them the most. Fathers have feelings too. Remember that. If you guys want to do me a favor, go to afatherlessamerica.com whenever you get a chance. It's a documentary I'm working on. Just go to afatherlessamerica.com. Check it out. What we're doing is going around the country. We're speaking to uh, scholars. We're speaking to lawyers. We're speaking to people like you who've been railroaded by this system that no one cares about. We're going to force America to listen to fathers. We're not going to go to war anymore for a country that doesn't care about us. We're not going to stand up anytime that there's supposed to be some type of tyranny that threatens us. And we put our lives on the line and we can't come back home just to be fathers. We're not going to do that anymore without being heard. Follow me on Twitter. Go to YouTube. See more of my stuff wherever. Go to um, TommySotomayor.com. I don't have anything to sell you but hope. And hopefully that hope will turn into action.